Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I love the look of and using box joints. I've had a few jigs over the years from shop bought ones to ones I've made for the table saw, but I saw a great idea from Make Something David Prosciutto, I'll put a link down below to his video, how he made one himself for the router. So I thought I'd have a go at doing it. I got some decent birch plywood for doing this and I'm gonna use two different thicknesses. 12 mil for the tops and the sled because I want it as thin as possible so it doesn't detract from the depth of the router cut and then some 18 mil for the more structural bits. I get the parts cut out on the table saw. This is not an ideal cut to make and that's why I will be making a panel sled but I was just being careful. I'd taken the plate off the base of the router and I could use that to mark out onto the 12 mil ply where the holes for mounting it would need to go. I used a drill guide to make sure my holes were nice and straight and drilled through all the marks for the mounting holes. I want the heads of the bolts to be under the surface of the table so I need to countersink all these holes and I've got a new set of countersink bits and these work so much better than the traditional style ones so I'll put a link down to this set below. It needs a hole in the center for the router bit to go through and I'm gonna make it a bit bigger than needed. Hopefully this will help with the actual dust collection. Whilst I have the drill out, I do a series of countersunk pilot holes around the outside. Now I can get this top piece screwed and glued onto a back piece, which is the same size, but made out of 18 mil. So now I can just get some screws through those pilot holes I drilled. This needs some side supports and I'm gonna cut them at an angle to reduce the amount of material used and to improve access to the router. So I get the mitre gauge set up and then make some cuts. These side pieces can then get glued and screwed on. Now I need to make a sled for the top, so I've got another bit of 12 mil ply that overhangs on both sides. And then I can get these strips of wood attached onto the overhangs to act as runners. So I just get them glued and clamped up. When the glue's dried, I can get the clamps off and then reinforce these joints with a few screws. This sled is gonna need a fence at the back. So I get a couple of strips cut down and then I'm gonna laminate these together. When the glue's gone off, I can then get it attached to the sled. So I'm just gluing and clamping it onto the back edge of the sled. Then when the glue's dried, I can come back and reinforce it with some screws from underneath. So the router bit I've got to use with this is a spiral upcut bit. And this is slightly longer than normal ones. It's three inches, because obviously it's got to stick through the thickness of the wood. Um, so I'll put a link down to this below. I can get this bit mounted into the router and then the router screwed into the new table. So a simple way of mounting this is just to drop it down into the quick release vise. So I get it in there and clamped up. Now to make the first cut. So I get the sled on and pushed into the router bit all the way up to the fence. Now I want to make an auxiliary fence that's a bit higher. So I get that in place and clamped up. We're going to take this off and move it later. So this is just temporary. Then I can get it cut out the same. I want the edges to be curved. So I've got a place to put my hands and keep them away from the blade or cutter. So I get that marked out and cut out on the bandsaw. Thank you. 
I need a peg to fit in this hole. So I've got this scrap of oak that I'm just going to take over to the table saw and shave down until I get a nice snug fit. It's far too long, so I just cut a smaller bit off, but I'm going to need the off cut later on. So you want your pin to be no taller than the thinnest material you want to cut with this. Now, when I cut that slot, I didn't take that into consideration. So for my pin, I put a little dog leg in it, if you can see that. Just so the top bit's going to fill the slot. And then the longer bit would be a bit thinner so I can do uh, thinner material. Now this pin can just be glued into place and left to dry. I get the sled put on and now I want to position the auxiliary fence. I get that scrap of wood I was saving pushed against the router cutter and then move the pin tight against that. Then I can get it temporarily clamped up in that position. I set the router cutter just above a bit of scrap wood I'm going to test this all out on. Then I can start making some cuts. The first cut goes against the pin, then it goes over the pin, moving it along and just repeating the process until I get to the end. When it's all done, the bit can be flipped around and the first slot put back over the pin and then I get my second bit of wood butted up against it and make the cut. Then I just keep moving along, repeating the cuts until I'm all the way through that piece. Now for the moment of truth and to see how it works. And that's come out pretty damn well. Because the fence is only clamped in place, if it was tight or loose, I could just move it back or forth to get the perfect cut. But as it's good, I'm gonna get it screwed in place. So that all worked great. In fact, it worked better than I thought because it came out correctly first time, as in I didn't need to adjust this fence. So the idea of it clamping on is if the joint is too tight or too loose, you can just undo the clamps, nudge the fence in or out a bit, and keep doing it until you get a perfect fit. But actually just putting the bit of wood the same size down there and clamping it meant I got it right first time. So that never happened. So that was great. Um, it also, it's an effortless cut. That's quite a powerful ro uh, router that. It's um, 2000 watts, I think. And it's that spiral um, uh, up cut bit, down, down cut bit, uh, works great. It really is a very smooth cut. The only downside is the dust collection. So it's got dust collection on the router and I left uh, an oversized hole there and with the down cut bit, it should be pulling the chips down towards the dust collection. But I think because of the sleds on there, it kind of blocks it a bit. So I might have to sort out some kind of dust collection on there, but all works pretty well. So last year, I made this simple router table that just slides onto the end of the bench on a couple of brackets. Now this, as you can see, goes into the vise or I could have some brackets and it could do exactly the same on the end of the bench. The only thing is I'd have to have it sticking up a few centimetres so that the sled wouldn't bash in to the bench top. So that's it all done. A pretty simple router jig for doing box cuts and obviously you could make different sleds that have different size slots, different size bits to do different size fingers. That's a lot of different sizes. Anyway, I'm sure you knew what I mean. So thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.